Organizations of every size rely on data centers and smaller versions of data centers called server closets to enable network connectivity and software applications that support many end-user devices, including desktop computers and phones. This room contains about 32 computers used by students at a university, and like many businesses, it relies on a server closet for its networking and software applications. Behind each computer workstation are power outlets and network jacks. The network jacks have Ethernet cables attached to their backsides that run through either walls, floors, or ceilings and terminate in a server closet. Here is an access door to a server closet. Because a server closet can contain hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of equipment, it is secured with entry devices that track each person that attempts to access the room. Within a server closet, there are many cages or racks filled with IT equipment. These cages have locks on them. In this particular case, the server room is shared by multiple departments, and so each department has keys to access their own cage. In this particular server cage, the rack holds several types of equipment. The top two devices are SANS, short for Storage Attached Network, and they have arrays of hard drives in them. Underneath them is a firewall device that filters all network traffic that comes into the servers in this rack. Underneath the firewall is a network switch. You can recognize it by the numbers of cables attached to it. The switch allows dozens of computers and servers to communicate with one another, and at least one of the cables in this switch is attached to the internet, and that cable gives every other device attached to this switch access to the internet through it. Near the bottom of this rack is a blade server. This particular blade server is an enclosure that houses 16 different servers that may be slid out and replaced when needed. At the bottom of this particular rack is a single server that resembles a desktop PC turned on its side. In this rack, starting at the bottom, is a UPS device. This is a battery that kicks in for a few minutes and can power the rack of equipment if the power goes out temporarily. Above it is a small server, and above that is another array of hard drives used for storage for the servers. Above that is another rack of 10 blade servers in a blade server enclosure. So far you've seen several dozen computers, but they don't have monitors attached to them. Above them is a rack console. This provides a keyboard, video, and mouse to each of the servers in the server rack. The bulky cable that I highlight in the video can be plugged into each of the servers in the rack in order to see that server's desktop. On the back side of the IT equipment, one interesting feature is that fiber optic cables are used to facilitate high-speed data transfers between the arrays of hard drives and the servers. It takes a lot of power to support server equipment. Here are some wall panels with circuit breakers that are found in this server closet. Power to the server racks is supplied by these cables that are coming out of the ceiling. Unlike your home power, which is relatively weak, server closets and data centers use outlets and fat cables that carry enough power to easily kill you, so don't stick a metal fork into one of these sockets to see what happens. The power cables from the ceiling feed power strips within individual cages. Typically, you will have two power strips in each cage with separate power supplies to each power strip. The IT equipment in the cage is plugged into two power strips simultaneously in case one of the strips loses power. Desktop computers and wireless access points need a way to connect to the switches in a server rack. Here, you see a bundle of Ethernet cables coming from the ceiling and feeding into the rack. Although not shown here, each blue cable attaches to a patch panel that has white cables on its front side and each of those white cables attaches to this switch. An alternative to running cables through the ceiling is to send network and power cables through the floor. Most data centers use raised floors to allow for cables and airflow to pass through them. Raised floors that have to support tons of equipment add significant cost to the construction of a building. Speaking of airflow, IT equipment runs hot and the rooms need air conditioners. Here you see air conditioners blowing cold air into the cold aisle of the server room. IT equipment frequently has fans on its front side that is expecting to suck in cold air to cool off with. The equipment pushes the hot air out their backsides. In this room, a plastic curtain separates the cold aisle and the hot aisle. The hot aisle is significantly warmer in temperature than the front side. Collectively, the air conditioning and IT equipment fans are so loud that it's hard to carry on a conversation in a server room.
IT equipment is typically replaced every three to five years, and so it's common to see messy activity related to a replacement cycle on any given day. One last word related to security. Because technology and data are the lifeblood of any organization, server rooms and data centers have cameras inside and out, so don't try anything malicious because you'll get caught. I hope you enjoyed this tour of a server closet. Have a great day.